Hey, this is Todd from Classic Rock Music Blog. I wanted to talk to you today about an Electric Light Orchestra album that you may not have heard about or heard and one that you need to. Um, it's from 2001, and the name of the album is Zoom. And Zoom was the has been the last uh, ELO um, release to date, and it was the first after 15 years um, since the band released uh, Balance of Power in 1986. And by 2001, ELO was basically Jeff Lynne in name. Um, all of the other band members uh, were pretty much gone doing other projects. The only the only uh, person um, that's even on this ELO related is Richard Tandy, and he plays on one track. Otherwise, you know, Mick Kaminsky, Hugh McDowell, Melvin Gale, um, Bev Bevan, Kelly Graucut, um you know they're all gone so basically it's just Lynn um, getting some uh, studio help and some very good studio help by the way um, George Harrison uh, guests on this album Ringo Starr plays drums on a few tracks and some people have commented that this has um, more of a traveling Wilburys feel than a classic ELO album and that's true in some respects because um, you're not going to find sort of the really dense arrangements that were on albums like El Dorado or, or um, you know, Out of the Blue, um, tracks like Fire and High and things like that. These are more straight ahead um, rock pop arrangements that, you know, sort of run the gamut from, you know, uh, 1950s and 60s rock to, you know, Jeff Lynne doing the very, um, the very lush uh, melodic um double backing and triple backing vocals that you know um, give these they're you know they're always sort of beatlesque in in comparison um just because lynn was is such a master at melody and arranging and um taking uh, a pop song and turning it into something incredible and um that's what he does here i mean th there's 13 tracks on zoom and it's um, for a collection of songs, they're probably as good as anything he put together on any previous Yellow album, you know, from the classic 70s days, um, regardless, and certainly far better than anything that came up in the late 70s when the band sort of veered off toward disco and, and some really saccharine type um, songs. Um, Zoom has been out of print for a, for a while, so it means finding it is kind of a pain. Um, you go on Amazon and you're only going to find um, sellers with, with either used copies and those typically um, started around 25 bucks and then you've got people with still sealed copies that have been hoarding these or think they're going to sell them but anyways they're um, you got these people trying to sell them for 120 bucks on up which is ridiculous um, online you can probably find it a little cheaper um, Every time I've seen a copy of this come up on eBay, there's always bids on it. So, I mean, the people that know about it, they're out there trying to find it. Um, you can find cassette copies um, for cheaper, you know, if you still have a tape player. So that's another way to go. But, you know, tapes are only as reliable as uh, tapes are. So um, one thing that's worth um, tracking down with this, though, is the Japanese version, which um, has an extra track called Long Black Road, which is sort of a... Uh, autobiographical um, song about making it as a musician and if you're gonna spend the money for the CD you can typically find the import for around 36 37 bucks and if you're gonna go with that then I'd recommend uh, you know tracking the tracking the import down it's a Japanese import um, you know eventually this CD will probably be reissued by somebody and it'll be available for 1098 and then it'll be 798 but you know, after 11 years, it's like, well, when's it going to happen? Um, who knows? But this is a this is one record that, if you're a fan of the the classic uh, ELO sound, you know, probably up to uh, out of the blue, you know, I definitely would recommend tr uh, tracking this down, um, finding a copy, checking it out. It's it's sort of one of those uh, uh, best kept secret type records, and um, Really, it has everything that Jeff Lynne does well and some of the things that he doesn't do so well. One of the things I, I didn't like so much about ELO in the past was I always thought that the drum sound in the studio was very mechanical, pretty tinny. Um, Bev Bevan's snare drums often just sounded like an, a tin can and, you know, 
Evan's a great drummer, but I never thought it, his sound was very good in the studio. And this record has more of a, just sort of a, j Lynn sort of takes a, more of a hands-off approach here. And um, I, I think it's for the better of that. And also, it plays some really good guitar in here, too. So, uh, again, 2001 Zoom, um, do a little investigating, see if you can track it down. It's worth your time. And it's probably one of my top five ELO records. So, um, hope you can find it. Hope you like it. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.